Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, my name's Simon Richards. Uh, just turned 36. <laughs> I have Asperger's syndrome. Uh, I live in a supported house in uh, Cardiff. Uh, Joe, give us a wave. He's one of my house staff. He's here today. <laughs> Great guy. <laughs> He's an Arsenal fan like me. That's always, that always helps. <laughs> uh, what this photo here shows you is just a few of the things I get up to. To be honest, if I, if I told you everything I get up to, we'd be here all day. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, st we'll start from the top. Uh, the first photo is uh, some of myself. Well, not, I'm not actually in the photo. I actually took that photo. But uh, some of my friends from Colour People First. Colour People First is a charity for people with learning disabilities, which I've been part of since 2005. I became chairperson of it uh, in 2013. And I'm, I am an active volunteer doing various things with Colour People First, um, including uh, this year I'll be volunteering at a festival in... Uh, called Wales Goes Pop, which is part of one of the projects we do called Events for All. Events for All is a project which, uh, where people with uh, learning disabilities get, not only get to access events, but also volunteer at them, which is brilliant. Uh, we've, we've been doing that for the past two years, and we've just had confirmation that, we, that we're going to be able to extend it until December, which is brilliant. Uh, that photo there is of our walking group, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. I've got the jumper. I thought I'd get a bit of advertising in. <laughs> uh, uh, with that, we do all sorts of walks across Cardiff, uh, the Brecon Beacons. That photo was actually taken in Brecon. Uh, and uh, we've even been to Pembrokeshire. In fact, it was only last week uh, we went. We, spent, we had an overnight stay in Tenby. Some brilliant views. Pembrokeshire is a lovely place. You all need to go and see it. Uh, and yeah, and that's just... We have a training team. We... Uh, I have done some training in my pa in the past as well, and hopefully, I'll be doing more of that in the future too. Uh, Cardiff First is incredibly important to me. <laughs> it's been a big part of my life for coming up to 14 years now, which is over a third of my life, and that is blooming terrifying to be honest. <laughs> the second photo here, uh, you, if you look closely, that those yes, those are actually drums. Uh, I love going out to live music events. Uh, I regularly attend open mic nights and karaoke's in local venues in Cardiff. Uh, and that, that picture there is of a, a music group I attend every week called Mind Your Music. Mind Your Music is full of is a music group that meets weekly. Many of the people there have experienced mental health issues and or learning disability. Last month we did our first ever, well only our second ever live gig. It was an event I actually helped organise myself. Uh, for it was a charity fundraiser. We raised over two hundred pounds on a night, which was brilliant. Uh, through that group, I've learned to to, m to do many new songs. I, I enjoy singing, uh, and I've even learned drums, which is brilliant. <laughs> I love the drums; it's one of my favourite instruments. Uh, the third photo on the right. Uh, this is probably a bit more relevant to the working and volunteering in the mainstream bit because. Uh, I have, I'm very keen on DJing. I, I did five years uh, at Hospital Radio Gamorgan in the Heath Hospital in Cardiff. And ever since, I've wanted to do more DJing. And I've had an opportunity to do that recently through a friend of mine who is also autistic. His name is DJ Chris Lawn. Check his page out on Facebook. He's brilliant. <laughs> Get a little plug in. And that photo there is of one, a paid gig that, we, that me and Chris did about a month or so ago. It was, it was, we literally only had about 48 hours notice and it was a 16th birthday party and a regular club night for teenagers. There were over 200 of them there that night. As you can imagine, that was pretty intimidating for us both. To make matters worse, Chris's laptop uh, decided to fail on him. Fail on him. He, had to run, he had to run back and get a spare one. I had to play the first few tunes on the night through a phone on, and Spotify. Thank <laughs> Goodness, it all worked out well, and they loved it. They they were they were up on the stage for like five hours solid, and that was, and that was a very rewarding experience. Chris and I also do a, a number of charity events together, and uh, he's he's actively looking out for opportunities for us both to do paid, more paid work, and that is brilliant. It is something I really enjoy. Uh, the middle now, the middle photo. Uh, 
uh, is of Hijinks Theatre Odyssey, is, which is a community-based drama group for people with and without learning disabilities. I've, I've been with them since 2010, and every year we do a big show in Wales Millennium Centre in Cardiff, one of the largest, one of the largest venues of its kind around, certainly in Wales. Uh, last year, we performed to it was our first ever complete sellout, so we had over 800 people come to see the show over the four nights, uh, three nights rather, we ran it. Every year, in we were towards the Christmas show in December, met many, new, many lovely people through that and learnt new skills. I never imagined I would be spending, <laughs> I'll, I'll be able to perform on the stage, but with, with Hijinx's help, that has been made possible. I've done a, f I've I've done a variety of different roles there, including a silent man, a reindeer, a wolf, and puppeteer. And I've even been Santa twice. Very rewarding. Oh, and I've even been a sheep as well. <laughs> so I'm running out of animal based roles to, to try, but <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty more I can find. Uh, what else have I not done? Uh, yes. That lovely lady there on the far right is my girlfriend, Sarah. You might have heard of her. She's been on telly quite a lot. In fact, uh, including Victoria Derbyshire on BBC Two. She was there on there a couple of years ago. Uh, we've been together just over seven years now. I absolutely love her. I love her to bits. She's blimmin' awesome. <laughs> and uh, I just want to say thanks to Darren, Paul, and all the State of Lake team for putting on a fantastic conference. There is so much. <laughs> it's just so... Wonderful. Thank you to all the speakers, Emily and all the other speakers. Emily, I, I identify very much with your speech in particular, in particular Fifi, because I lost my mum only three years or so ago. It was just a few months after I moved, and it was an incredibly tough time, but and it still is. And yeah, so I hope I'm, I'm just like to think that both our mums are looking down on us today, Fifi being very proud of us. Um, uh, that's pretty much all I've got time for. So, any questions, guys? I just want to know. How, well, she was. I was curious with Emily, and now with you. How do you find time to do all these things? It's, it's a really busy schedule you have. <laughs> to be honest, this is just this is just a small part of it. I got <laughs> literally, literally, we literally would be all day trying to get in everything I do in the week. I'm impressed and a bit jealous because I mostly go to work and then just come home and sit on the sofa. So you've inspired me to try and get out and do more myself. 